music and composition, you know, so uh, we led you to start doing uh, Beats for TV series. Sure. I always had an interest in doing like scores, soundtracks, things like that, you know. So once I had the opportunity to try to do my own little, my own little style behind some film, I jumped on it. You know, in my book, nothing be to fail but to try. So what's the difference between doing tracks for TV versus doing tracks for records? Different structure. You know, you're doing a, a track for a record. You know, there's different breakdowns. You know, different areas with different types of sounds. You know, you got to separate your verse versus your chorus and all that. So with a, with a score, you know, you're doing, you know, behind the scenes type of things, and little sounds behind things that's going on on film, they're not as structured to the point as a song would have to be because there's different situations going on in the film where it breaks down differently. So such as somebody falling on the floor, you want some dramatic sound going on there, you know, that's where you'll put that in in comparison to having to make something to go with the dramatic sound. You know, I follow the film in comparison to the lyrics following the track. Right, so what were the, some of your favorite tracks in uh, season one? All of them. You know, me, all my tracks are my favorites. It's kind of hard to pick because each time I do one, I'm in love with it. And I do another one, I'm in love with that one. I do another one, I'm in love with that one. So every track I do is my favorite one. All right, stay out the way. Go with the best scene, like you know, what one be like, okay, that one fit the scene. Mango. Which one is that? Explain mango. to the audience which mango was. Mango would be for the scene where Shannon's going through his mental stage, trying to figure out what's what, who's who, this, that, and the other. You know, he's taking his time to himself, he's wandering through the city, you know, different locations, and he's He's in real deep thought, so that track seemed to fit one of them real deep thought type of scenes. So to me, that one fit in just right. Always wondering, right. not why, but how. How did we let it get that bad? the track that started the whole thing off? As a matter of matter fact, fact it was, was, the man that does this film, um, when he came to me, I had played him a few sorts of tracks, but he gave me a, a, a scene, an idea, and like right there on the spot, I kind of already had something for it, and I pulled it up, and it fit the pocket just right for him, and the rest was history. That's right, and it's been on ever since. One of my favorite tracks is uh, Uncle Doobie's Funeral. Instead of something, you know, more sad to, you know, usually would represent a funeral. Well, you know, the way I always look at it is when we lose someone, it may hurt us. But that person went to a much better place, gonna be doing much better things than what we have to deal with. So in order for us to feel exactly what they feel once they move on, 
We got to celebrate the way they want us to celebrate. We're going to have a good time. Go fall, set some, set some things up. Keep set some things over after the after party, right? <laughs> so it wasn't no need of being sad. From what I understood, he wasn't a sad man. So as bright as he was, I felt the track needed to be as bright as the life I brought. And he cussed me out all the time and said, you are not a player. <laughs> I said, what am I then? He said, you are Canadian. <laughs> you are not a player. I've been living in another lifetime, but not this lifetime. <laughs> Zuma made me cry. I get around him and start crying. He said, man, stop crying like a sissy. <laughs> Another one of my favorite tracks is uh, Mark's Dice Game. That was like real, like, you know, movie, like, we'll put you in the mood for that one. I was told what the scene was, and I pictured a lot of different dice games that I had been around personally, and, you know, it just fell out of me that way. Sometimes I can't really think of how that track is gonna go. Just I go with the feeling, you know, and that feeling told me to come with it the way it came. So damn, dice games be that tits in the hood. This shot big hope he won't punch out trying to bless up for the show. With somebody in this pocket, y'all know how the little homies do. I told them they're out here eating. Y'all know. Ooh, ooh, What's up? Wanna feed the nigga who's the nigga up? Uh, okay. Yeah, we got you. Uh -huh. okay, boy, man. Yeah, uh -huh. Uh -huh. A lot of games be like that, you know. Also depends on the people involved. I've seen them go from fights to shootouts, so. Yeah, they can get intense. Reach you out, they want to get some of these cold tracks for their own self. Oh, you can email me at danglebeats at gmail.com. D-A-N-G-E-L-B-E-A-T-S at gmail.com or hit me up on my IG. Danglebeats, the same. So what you got in store for season two? Oh, well, you know, everybody's a little more mature in season two, you know. Money's a little bigger in season two, so you know, I gotta come with a little more funk, a little more, a little more out there for you, you know what I'm saying? Something to really make you feel what's going on, so you know what you're watching. Do me a favor, man. Just do Actually, it was my first legitimate reggae track. Never really pushed one. Like, I toyed around with it but until I was asked to actually do one. You know, I never really had to. So, the ones you hear in D series are the first reggae track pushed off my fingertips. And, you know, I just went with the feeling. Everything I do, I go with the feeling.